Most people struggle to get their low end to sound good because they make very common errors with their bass. So in today's video, I'm gonna explain what the most important bass types are, how to use each and every single one of them, and the common mistakes you're probably making so that your low end can start to sound much better. Let's start off with the 808. You're probably used to using 808s for trap or drill beats, but 808s are actually used for other genres that might surprise you, like boom bap. Now there are some really important things that you need to know about when you're using 808s that I haven't really seen many other people talk about. Let's first look at this loop that I made here that's pretty trappy. And here we introduce our 808. Most beat makers have a library of 808 samples, and these samples are often created in specific keys. You've probably had the experience where you use an 808 and you like how it sounds, but when you build a pattern, the 808 doesn't sound good when certain notes are used. The reason this happens is because of the 808's distortion. When using 808 samples, the distortion is already baked into the 808. So as you play different notes, ones that are far away from the original key, that distortion shifts into different and new frequency areas. And this can be why your 808 starts to disappear at times. So if this is a problem that you're running into, it can help to simply just add your own distortion onto your 808. That way when you play a note that's far away from the original key, the distortion is gonna be more consistent and present in one frequency region. But I will say be careful when adding distortion onto your 808. It can easily end up killing the low end and removing the subby frequencies from your sample. Learning when and how to add distortion correctly is important when using 808s. This is something that I covered in the video next to me, so if you want a deeper dive into 808s, I recommend checking that video out. By the way, if you enjoy my videos, hit like and subscribe. If you ever get tired of my videos, just unsubscribe, it's all good. Earlier, I mentioned that 808s can also be used in other genres like boom bap beats, which may surprise you. Here is an example of a boom bap beat that I made that includes an 808. And this is how 808s can be used in boom bap as a supplemental or secondary bass. But there's an important difference. Take a look at this 808's frequencies. Compared to our last example, it's just far more subby and far less colorful. 808s can be useful in boom bap because the types of basses commonly used in boom bap may at times have a weaker sub presence. And so adding an 808 is one way to help fix this problem. When using 808s for boom bap beats in this way, I recommend being selective and copying and pasting just a few core notes from your bass line. Don't copy and paste your entire elaborate bass line for your 808 pattern, you'll just end up overwhelming your beat. Just a quick side note, if you want some free 808s, I do have my free drum kit that's available to download down below in the description, which comes with some 808s if you're in need. Let's move on to bass guitars next, or rather plugins that are meant to mimic bass guitars and other types of bass instruments. That's exactly what I used for this bass line that you heard here. For those wondering, I'm using a contact library that you can actually get for free, the complete start bundle that you can just download. I'll leave a link down below too in case you're interested. These types of basses are helpful if you want to make boom bap beats or lo-fi beats. They typically aren't as heavy in the low end as we covered, and that's completely okay. Don't feel as though you need a heavy, intense bass in all your beats. These types of basses have one big advantage, which is that they allow for more articulation. For example, if you play a note at a low velocity versus a high velocity, the frequency distribution of our note changes beyond just the overall volume. This now has far more new higher frequencies. So when building your bass line using these types of basses, pay extra attention to the velocity of each note. This can help you introduce a level of detail into your beat. 
In terms of selection, I personally gravitate towards fingered basses. These sound great for beat making. When making jazzier old school boom bap, upright basses can be a better fit. The reason being, upright basses were commonly used instruments in jazz. <laughs> And you can hear this upright bass fits pretty well. And to the point that I made earlier, this bass isn't insanely dense on the low end. Depending on the beat, a weaker low end can help you recreate an old school aesthetic that actually might fit better. One thing to point out with this pattern, I am using a unique technique with my bass where I create a pattern in multiple octaves. This is one of the benefits of using these kinds of basses. You can use them to fill up more space in your beat. And by using this technique, you almost introduce an entirely different instrument when these basses are played in higher octaves. Another common bass that you might use for boom bap is a sampled bass. The big advantage of using a sampled bass is that you can find some pretty unique bass textures and patterns and ideas to use in your own beats. There are two common approaches when using sampled basses. You can find a sample that has one single clean bass note, like I did here. And you can use EQ to isolate the bass. If you want to create a more complicated bass line using this bass, you could turn on keyboard mode in your sampler. If your sampler doesn't have this feature, just record that single note and drag it into your beat as a one-shot sample. Another approach to using sampled bass is to just take an entire bass line from a song. A great example of this is Quiet Storm by Mob Deep, one of my favorite songs of all time. Sampling the bass line from White Lines. Next, let's move on to synth basses. This is a big category of sounds, lots of variety in here, but there are typically two common types of synth basses that show up in beat making. One is a bass that is similar to a Reese, which is a big dense bass that is used to constantly play throughout your beat. When using these, it can be helpful to control the filter cutoff dial. Adding too many high frequencies can make your beat sound way too full. Oftentimes, you only hear very loud, dominant, colorful bass lines like this if it's the primary sound in the beat and there are very few other instruments or textures. An example of this would be Hip Hop by Dead Prez. The other common use for synth basses is a shorter, colorful, plucky type of bass like this one. You'll notice that these basses are extremely colorful and take up a large amount of space in our beat, which is why we program shorter notes. If we use this bass similarly to our last example and had it constantly playing, it ends up really overpowering the beat. So when using these types of synth basses, it's going to be important to control the length of your notes, as well as the shape of the sound using envelope control. In fact, almost all the bases that we covered require you to know how to use envelope control and filters and really know how to operate your plugins to get your bass to actually sound good in your beat. So if you want to learn how to use almost any plugin easily, check out the video right next to me. I show you a simple framework that you can use to approach any and every synth and know exactly how to use it right away. Not only will this help you control your bases better, but just make better beats overall. So check out that video and get to some learning. Click it.